Hey what's up guys, Will here for GSM Arena. Two years after the value-packed Poco F1 made a name for itself by offering a flagship chipset on a budget, the next model, the Poco F2 Pro, has finally come out. It's going for a considerably higher price, so is it as good of a deal? Let's find out in our Poco F2 Pro review. Despite its considerably lower price than the true flagship, the Poco F2 Pro boasts a premium build. It's made from Gorilla Glass 5, with a solid aluminum frame, and smooth, frosted matte finish. The phone is overall a bit thick and hefty, but I like the feel of our cyber grey finish. It gives the phone a bit of a metallic look, despite the glass. I also like the rather unusual back design, with its X-shape arrangement for the four cameras. Although the Poco F2 Pro has some slick looks, its build isn't totally premium. It doesn't have any IP-rated waterproofing, but this isn't really expected for anything less than a flagship. And actually, it's pretty hard to waterproof something that has moving parts, like the F2 Pro's pop-up selfie cam. The mechanism is fast, and besides its flashy colors, the main advantage is that you don't have to house the camera in a notch or cutout, so the display can be as bezel-less as possible. It's a 6.67-inch OLED with a 1080p resolution, a significant upgrade over the IPS LCD on the original Poco F1. You get, of course, deeper blacks than an LCD can provide, and brightness is impressive here, around 500 nits normally, and a boost of up to 850 nits in auto mode. Colors are decently accurate too, if you opt for that in settings, and there's support for HDR10 content as well. You don't get a trendy high refresh rate, just a regular 60Hz, but there is a fast 180Hz touch sampling rate for increased responsiveness to input. Like many phones with OLED screens, the Poco F2 Pro makes use of an under-display fingerprint reader to save space on the body. This one is reliable and fast. It's just the unlock animation that's a bit on the slow side. In addition to an always-on display, the Poco F2 Pro makes use of the LEDs on the pop-up selfie cam, which glow if you have a notification or when the phone is charging. For audio, the F2 Pro has a single bottom firing loudspeaker. It's quite loud, but quality-wise, it's no match for phones with a stereo setup. Vocals do sound okay, while the songs in general sound flat, with no real bass. However, you do get a 3.5mm audio jack up at the top, convenient if you want to plug in traditional headphones. The F2 Pro's interface is the Poco Launcher 2, based on Xiaomi's MIUI 11 and Android 10. The interface is not much different from regular MIUI visually, except for the fact that there's an app drawer here by default. The app drawer has a search bar at the bottom for easier reach, and it's super customizable too. You can group apps by color, alphabetically, or even some custom groupings. Gesture navigation is pretty standard issue here. Though unlike some other solutions we've seen, this one lacks a quick switch between recent apps. One thing that is missing on the Poco F2 Pro is expandable storage, but there are options for 128 or 256 gigs on board, so you shouldn't run out of space anytime soon. And there is a game turbo feature, basically a space where you can control game performance and settings. You can get pretty in depth with it, with an individual profile for each game. As you'd expect from a flagship killer, the Poco F2 Pro has the latest chipset on board, a top-of-the-line Snapdragon 865. CPU and GPU performance is awesome, on par with the best out there, and you also get support for 5G network speeds. Gaming is a breeze, and the F2 Pro handles everyday tasks without a hiccup. Great battery life on phones is usually reserved to those that don't run such a high-powered chipset, but the F2 Pro managed to surprise us. With its 4700mAh power pack, it scored an endurance rating of 120 hours in our proprietary tests. It's the best score we've seen from a Snapdragon 865 phone yet. And the charging capabilities are no less impressive. The Poco F2 Pro comes with a 33 watt power delivery charger, and with it we were able to charge the phone from 0 to 60% in half an hour. A full charge took just over an hour. On the back of this phone, there's a 64 megapixel quad bear main camera, a 5 megapixel macro cam, a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle cam, and a depth sensor. Without a telephoto camera, the Poco F2 Pro is a bit behind the competition, and we were hoping it could make up for that in quality. Let's have a look. The main camera outputs 16 megapixel photos, and in daylight, the overall performance of the camera is very good, but inconsistent. The photos generally have nice color reproduction, 
great sharpness, and high detail. Dynamic range is decent too. But about 20% of the photos came out looking just off, softer and lacking in detail. We couldn't put our finger on what was causing that, but we hope it can be addressed in a future update. Portrait shots are taken with the main camera, and they come out pretty nice, with natural skin tones, and competent edge detection if the background isn't too complex. There is a 2x zoom toggle in the viewfinder, but these are just a crop from the main cam. That's not to say that these are bad, in fact we're quite happy with the level of detail, though sharpness could use some boost. The ultra-wide camera offers similar rendition to the main one in terms of colors, contrast, and exposure. As you'd expect though, these are a little softer, and dynamic range is a bit more narrow, but distortion correction is spot on. Now onto the macro cam, which really stands out in the sea of poor macro cams that we've been seeing this past year. This one has a native 2x zoom due to the 50mm lens, plus autofocus, so you can afford to be a bit further away from the subject. The shots are sharp with pleasant colors and nice fine detail. At night, the Poco F2 Pro's main cam is nothing to write home about. The contrast and colors are nice, and the dynamic range is adequate. But the shadows are a bit too dark, and the worst about these photos is the general softness. Switching over to night mode fixes most of these issues. All the noise is gone, and you get much more detail and sharpness. It does a good job with the shadows and highlights as well, and even light sources. Shots from the ultra-wide angle cam at night aren't very good. They're smudgy, noisy, and lacking in detail, and there's no night mode here that could help things out. Night mode isn't available for the zoomed photos either, so as you can guess, the image quality there is hardly a winner. Let's talk selfies. The 20 megapixel pop-up selfie camera snaps some nice looking photos, with plenty of detail and nice skin tones, even in more challenging light situations. Now on to video recording. The Poco F2 Pro actually supports shooting in 8K at 30fps, which is the current trend. Although truly enjoying the benefits of such footage, it's difficult without a similarly high-res display. As far as 4K video goes, footage from the main cam at 30fps is pretty good. It's sharp and contrasty with punchy colors, barely visible noise, and wide dynamic range. The ultra-wide camera is capable of doing 4K videos as well, and has similar processing with just a little drop in sharpness. These are definitely some of the better ultra-wide videos around. You can shoot videos with a macro camera as well in 1080p resolution. These are detailed and sharp, though there's no stabilization here. So although you might find an artistic way to use this kind of footage, you'll require a tripod or a gimbal. Speaking of stabilization, you get EIS on both the main and ultra-wide cams, even in 4K and it works quite well. And if you want to go even smoother, you can use the gimbal-like steady video mode, though resolution is capped at 1080p. So just like most flagship killers, the Pocophone's cameras are competent, but not quite at flagship level. They do a decent job though, and even bring something unique to the table with a dedicated macro cam with longer lens. So that's the Xiaomi Poco F2 Pro. Just like its predecessor, it packs some great features for the money. You get a bright and notchless OLED screen within a snazzy and premium looking design. There's a flagship grade chipset, competitive fast charging, and chart topping battery life. And they're not perfect, but the cameras are pretty versatile, except for the lack of a telephoto. Besides that, there are a few things missing here compared to a true flagship, like a high refresh rate screen, waterproofing, or stereo speakers. But these are probably not deal breakers for most people, especially at this price. Now the Poco F2 Pro isn't exactly a cheap phone, and that was a lot of what made the Poco F1 so popular. But at 500 euros, it's able to compete with devices going for over a thousand. If that's not bang for your buck, I don't know what is, and the Poco F2 Pro deserves our recommendation. Thanks for watching guys, stay safe, and see you on the next one.